I'm Alfonso Gonzalez. And I'm Trenton Matson. This is our Aero 320 final project. One of the major subsystems on a spacecraft is the Attitude, Determination, and Control System. Here we can see the International Space Station pictured as a control plant in this example. The ADCS system can be split up into two processes, Attitude Determination and Attitude Control. The spacecraft attitude or orientation is obtained by sensors like gyroscopes, GPS, and communication antennas. After the actual orientation and position of the spacecraft is determined from these sensor readings, control cues can be sent to the spacecraft, which will be transformed into controlled moment torques on the spacecraft body. So the governing equations of motions are two sets of equations you need to consider, which are attitude and orbit. The attitude equations measure which direction the spacecraft is pointing, which can be represented as quaternions or Euler angles. In this image, we have the quaternion version of these equations, where you have the rate of change of the angular velocity and the quaternion values. And the orbit equations tell you where your spacecraft is in the orbit. So for a two-body, no perturbation problem, the only force acting on the spacecraft is the gravity of the central body, which can be modeled by the x, y, and z equations shown. The actual dynamic motion of the spacecraft in space can be modeled as a continuous system because constant orbital perturbations governed by Newton's second law affect the motion of the spacecraft. However, the actual attitude, determination, and control system works as a discrete process because no matter how small they are, the onboard SIP computers use time steps for its calculations. Inputs to the attitude determination system include sensor readings like angular velocity from onboard gyroscopes that output real-time position orientation. At this point, calculations can be made and a controlled torque can be output to an onboard control moment gyros. Measurement, feedback, and control. There are various sensors on the ISS. Uh, the gyros measure the angular velocity of the body. The GPS measures the position in orbit and there's communication antennas which use uh, cross-referencing signals to figure out which way the body is pointed. The feedback of the system is a control torque since there's some angular velocity and orientation of your spacecraft and you want another one so you're gonna have to control the torque to get it to that state. And the control law is that PID control law, proportional integral derivative. If there were no perturbations on the ISS, it would not need the integral part, but since there are, then it does use it. The spacecraft's motion and position are defined in the Earth-centered inertial frame, while all of the onboard sensor readings will be measured with respect to a spacecraft body frame. Additional coordinate frames may include payload-specific coordinates, which could define spacecraft pointing tolerances to perform certain scientific missions. Here's a block diagram of what the PID controller would look like. So for each time step, you have a desired attitude that you want, and you have an estimated attitude that comes from your sensors. From there, you get a control torque from the PID controller, and the dynamics of the body will output an actual attitude, which, and then you keep cycling through all your time steps. Here is a video of Planetary Resources demonstrating their system when they're initially pointed straight down, and they move the spacecraft to be pointed straight up. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you.